Are you looking to get full marks in your next IGCSE exam? Well, don't worry because this video has got your back with all of the tips you need to get that A star in your next exam. So without further ado, let's get into the tips right now. Tip number one, to get full marks in an IGCSE biology exam, you need to make sure you know certain things. Firstly, being command term. So every single question in the exam is going to start with something called a command term. It's essentially something like describe, explain, justify, state. All of these terms are command terms and they essentially indicate to you what sort of stuff you need to do in order to answer the question, how you need to answer the question. So for instance, let me give you some examples. Like if I have a question like explain the process of photosynthesis. What I need to do in an explain question is actually go into a lot of detail about why and how something occurs. The why and how behind an explain question is the only thing you need to answer that question to a full mark standard. Okay, if I get a question like explain why photosynthesis occurs or explain how the process of photosynthesis occurs, I need to go in depth about, you know, the process itself. Talking about the substrates, talking about the pro uh, products, things like that. Secondly, describe. Describe is a little bit of a toned down version of explain. That's how I like to think about it. It's essentially where you give some sort of description still. You give some detail, but you don't give as much detail as an explain question. You just give a definition and maybe one or two more points about that topic or about that process. The third one could be state. State or list is essentially generally a one or two mark question at max. It's basically just asking you to state or list what you know the question is asking you so it's just a one-liner one word that sort of thing and lastly justify this is probably the most difficult command term it's basically all about you know giving the pros and cons the advantages and disadvantages weighing them to make sure okay does the advantages outweigh the disadvantages or does the disadvantages outweigh the advantages and then at the end of your answer you give a conclusive statement being like i agree with this question or i disagree because the advantages outweigh the disadvantages or the disadvantages outweigh the advantage. Go immediately to your past paper website. So past paper websites like in the official Cambridge website, for instance, with a lot of past papers for your specification, for your syllabus, go to that website and look at the mark schemes attached with those past papers. So basically, if they have terms like in bold, if there's a lot of questions where, you know, they have the answer given and certain points in that answer are written in bold, make sure you pay attention to that and write it down somewhere because those words are called keywords. All of these bolded out terms or bolded out words are called keywords that you 100% need to include in your response for that particular topic in order to get the whole mark, in order to get a full mark on that question. Right? So for instance, if I have a question on enzymes, I will make sure to include key terms or key words like active site, substrate, high concentration, enzyme substrate complex, binding, complementary, specific. You see how so many words are coming out of my mouth immediately like that? That's exactly how you guys should be if you want to get full marks. So make sure you're tracking down these keywords and making note of what sort of words the examiners are using in their mark schemes and make sure you keep that pattern in your mind. And speaking of the holidays, whether you're a student going on vacation for the summer break or you just need prescription glasses to read and study, Firmu has got you covered. Just look at these glasses, guys. They make my outfits look so chic and so professional looking. And even with my regular prescription glasses, they go so well with every single outfit that I wear. With Firmu's ongoing Black Friday pre-sale till the 24th of November, you can now get a buy one get one free offer on all sunglasses and prescription glasses as well as a 25% discount on lenses. So obviously, I decided to get myself a couple of glasses. Firstly, here are the black semi-matte glass sunglasses that I got with a golden finish of the code ST11071. With the actual Black Friday sale, you can actually get an even bigger discount on glasses. And you know the best thing about this is that it's so affordable. As you can see, most of the styles are literally within the 15 to 30-ish dollar range. And they're really budget friendly for students like yourself. Their prescription glasses can be made with blue light protection. And their sunglasses can be made with UV protection. So your eyes will always remain safe regardless of whether you're going out in the sun or just reading something on your devices. These prescription glasses come in so many different colors and so many different styles as you can see on the Firmu website and you can even make them customizable to your eye power so if you have a high power for your eyes these glasses can be made to suit your specific eye power needs as well here is something interesting just look at this online try on feature it is so cool it's so useful to help you identify what sort of styles of glasses would actually suit your face based on your face shape 
They also have sizing guides that help you customize your glasses so accurately that in fact, you can get a pair to exactly fit your facial measurements. You can upload a photo of yourself or take a picture in real time and try on so many different glasses at once using the online try on feature. So let's have a look at these ones that I chose, starting off with the clear frameless glasses with the code M03603. These clear glasses will go perfectly with every single outfit, including denims like what I have on now, floral prints like this dress that I have on now, as well as simple and casual outfits like a plain t shirt and pant. I always keep a pair of firm glasses handy with me wherever I go, so if you'd like to get yourself a pair, make sure you use my code PMUM50 for a 50% discount on all frames when you order through the Firmo website. You can also check out the glasses in the link in my description box where the codes will also be available so be sure to check out Fermo's glasses i'd highly recommend getting yourself a pair or your loved ones a pair and with that let's get back into the video so with the worked example effect when you look at a mark scheme answer break it down into four different segments firstly what has the examiner response done well what are some key words or key things that they've bolded out and they've said okay students need to make sure they're writing these terms in order to get full marks that's the stuff that they've done really well, so that's the stuff that you should be making note of as good. Secondly, what has the examiner done badly in the sense that what have students done badly? What sort of mistakes have been made in the past, common errors, you know, common um, things that they've done wrong, stuff like that. Make sure you actually keep note of that, especially in, you know, longer questions, four markers, six markers. There's always going to be some sort of thing that they point out you should not be writing this. Make sure you keep that in mind. Number three. What are some suggestions you think you could make? Okay, so what are, you know, some things that you think might actually be useful to add in? So all of the times, it's actually not necessary to exactly mimic the examiner's response, but it's important to make sure your concepts align with what the examiner thinks, right? You need to make sure you have similar thoughts, essentially. So try and think of ways that you can improve your own answer. And lastly, make sure you keep a note of those keywords, okay? Make sure you keep it segregated based on topics. So for enzymes, I would keep a set of keywords. For photosynthesis, I would keep a set of keywords. Respiration, I would keep a set of keywords. Segregate them based on topic. And by the end of the year, by the end of, you know, um, your studying time and by exams, you should have a keyword bank for every single topic. Tip number three is about how to do past papers correctly so you can get the most out of them. The key thing is with past papers, it's not about quantity, right? It's about quality. It's about how well you can do the past paper and also how much you can extract out of the past paper because there's really no point in doing 15 to 20 past papers if you're not gaining much out of it, if you're not understanding what the examiner wants from you. So for past papers, there's two categories. I like to go with the MCQ section first, always in an exam, because it's the section where you can cover it very quickly. You know, it's not very time consuming, so you can actually just quickly get rid of that section and then move on to the marks that actually count, which is the short answer section that's worth a larger chunk of your marks in the exam. With the MCQ section, make sure you're using the elimination method. So the elimination method is where you look at all the options, A, B, C, and D, and then you look at, firstly, how, you know, they make, do they even make sense in the first place? Most of them, because a lot of the times in MCQs, two of the options are outright wrong. Okay, you can eliminate two of the options immediately as you look at the answers and as you look at the question. Secondly, you'll be left with two options, right? Most of the time, the actual right answer is in fact, if you're guessing, like let's say you have come to the point where you're just guessing, the actual right answer is the one that is similar. So if you have um, an enzyme question and the question's answers are something like, you know, the enzyme has a complementary shape, the enzyme has a complementary shape and it's sort of different at the end. The enzyme has a specific shape. The enzyme has a non-specific shape. The non-specific shape one is wrong anyways. So I have three left. Now I think about which are similar. The complementary one is similar right to each other. So it's most likely that, that one of those two is the right option. And then once you reach those two options, make sure you're really thinking about what you've learned. So a lot of the times we panic, right? When we have two similar confusing options, we just look at it and we're like, oh my God, what, you know, what is the answer? Because we're kind of in that situation where we're stressed, we can't really think, but make sure you go back to what you have learned, okay? Oftentimes, they will try to confuse you. That's exactly why MCQs are made the way they are. They try to confuse you with two similar looking options, but always make sure you go back to your syllabus, go back to your content, think about what your teacher has said, think about, you know, what your textbook has told you as content, and make sure you 
take your knowledge from there and apply it to their MCQ scenario. Tip number four is about those longer questions like the four markers and six markers. Whenever you look at your mark schemes and you try to note down those key words that you need to make sure you're using in every single question to get those full marks, make sure you're tracking down those keywords by topic. What I like to do for this is actually use a poster type of template. So this is what I do. Basically, these are all of the keywords or key processes that I need to know when it comes to photosynthesis, for instance, or Calvin cycle or respiration. I make sure I do all of those keywords in one single place. So either I keep a notebook, something called a mistake booklet, which I'll go into a little bit more detail about. So either I would do a notebook or I would do a poster like this, where every single keyword about that topic has been segregated, compiled, and blotched, added onto here. I mentioned something called mistake booklet. Basically, it is a book segregated by, you know, topic, by sheets, where you put all of the keywords and also the mistakes that you have made in previous exams. This is so incredibly important. You need to make sure you're actually tracking your errors and tracking your mistakes to see where you go wrong so that you don't make the same mistake on the next exam or on your actual exam. Make sure you're tracking both your keywords and the questions that you got wrong. So what you do is you write the question you got wrong and you write the exact examiner mark scheme response right below it and you write your suggestions for improvement. So you write, be self-aware and be self-reflective in the sense that you actually write what did I do wrong the first time when I did this question? How can I improve my response to this question? How can I start thinking about this question a little differently I, you know, the next time I approach it? Things like that. Make sure you have both the keywords and both your mistakes in a single set or in a single section so it's easy to navigate. And lastly, tip number five is about the actual content. So I made this mistake in you know my GCSEs where I focused so much on past papers and doing questions that I actually missed out on revising content itself and going back to my textbook. Right. So the tip I'm going to give you guys here is really make sure you know your content Firstly, before starting past papers, but also after doing past papers. So after you've done a set of past papers, make sure you go back and be self-reflective. What topics are it that I'm a little bit weaker at? What do I really not understand? What topics are those where, you know, I actually have no idea what this topic is talking about? Things like that. Make sure you do a traffic light system. So I've mentioned this before. A traffic light system is where you segregate topics on the basis of difficulty. So red is where the topics are, you know, the most difficult, the hardest. Yellow sort of um, orange is where topics are medium difficulty and green is the topics that are the easiest that you could smash out within you know an hour of study. Make sure you segregate topics based on that you know traffic light system and then prioritize. So the stuff that's really hard in red, make sure you study that first. Go back to the textbook again, read the textbook multiple times or make you know those mind maps like this for instance. Make these posters. These are the best resource you can use to study and regurgitate. Take that information from your brain and really see how much you know. Go back to your textbook, revise those topics again before you do a second round of past papers. That's it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, do make sure to like, share and subscribe to Biolog. I really hope that these tips will help you for studying when it comes to your next IGCSE exam. And I wish you guys all the very best. Have a great day.